In the last class, we are taking a look at what are anonymous classes. We understood anonymous classes using two scenarios. In the first scenario, we understood how to implement a method inside an abstract class using an anonymous class. And in the second scenario, we have looked at how to implement a method inside an interface by using an anonymous class. In today's class, we'll be understanding lambda expressions. Lambda expressions are used for implementing methods inside a functional interface. And we use lambda expressions to reduce the number of lines of code we write and it makes our code more concise. So we'll understand all these things with an example. First, let us take an interface. So let's cons consider this interface employee. It has this one abstract method that is void display. A very simple method we'll consider. And if you want to implement this method using an anonymous class, how will you perform that? Say implement display using an anonymous class. So this we have seen in a previous class, right? How to do that? We have to use employee is equal to new employee. And then you provide the definition of your anonymous class here. What is the definition we are going to give? The definition for this method that is public void display and uh, we are going to say we'll have a simple sysout statement here like I am the professor. This we have seen in our last session and we know how this one works. How to invoke this method we'll be just calling e dot display and we have to close this. Okay. So when I call e dot display this method inside the anonymous class will be called and it's going to execute. The output is this. So we have seen this. We know this. So now we are going to take a look at this particular concept. We will see what are lambda expressions. See lambda expressions reduce uh, even this further. There is no need to create an anonymous class to actually give the definition of this method. And we will see how to do that. And even before looking into that, we have to understand what is a functional interface. So we will understand what is a functional interface in Java. A functional interface is an interface that has exactly one abstract method as part of it. So what is a functional interface? It is an interface that has only one abstract method. So you can call employee to be a functional interface because it has just one abstract method display. So when you are having such functional interfaces, instead of creating an anonymous class and uh, providing the implementation of that method, we can use a lambda expression. So no need to create an anonymous class to just give the implementation of this method. We can use another shortcut that is the lambda expression. I will tell you how this code now reduces when we use the lambda expression. So let me delete everything. So this is a demo for lambda expressions. So what we are going to do is we are going to use lambda expression to implement this method. We are not going to create an anonymous class. So we are going to say employee e is equal to and then this is how you define this method parenthesis and then an arrow mark and then within this I'm just going to say I'm going to have a simple sysout statement like I am the professor and then close the body of the function and then a semicolon. So this actually is the method body of display. We are just defining it using an lambda expression and this is the syntax. You will understand the syntax when we take up more examples. But by this time you should know that this is the method body and that's how you invoke this method. And how you invoke this method is actually you have to call e.display. So when I call e.display this particular function body executes. Let's go and take a look at this. 
So we are getting the same result as we achieved uh, while we are using an anonymous class. But then you see the number of lines of code we have written has reduced drastically. So you can you very well use a lambda expression whenever you are going to have a functional interface and then you are going to provide the definition of that single abstract method in your code. So this is called a lambda expression and how you define this method is you give two parentheses an arrow mark and then you put the method definition inside the two curly brackets here and then you call this method e dot display so this one actually executes this part of the code so i hope you all have understood what is a lambda expression now let us go further let us understand lambda expressions with further examples what if our method has an input parameter here or an argument here for instance if this takes string name say our method takes a parameter name then how we are going to define that function here so since it takes this parameter we have to give that parameter here too so the parameter that is getting passed to a method is name and what we are going to do with this uh, parameter inside our code is say I'm just going to print uh, I am the professor and then that name so how we are going to use that parameter is defined here and when I invoke this method e dot display I should pass the parameter value to so let me directly pass my name here Satish so now what happens is e dot display will execute this part of the code by using this parameter that is mapped to name so what should be the output it should be i am the professor satish let's go and see whether we are getting the output here so that's how you use lambda expression with a single parameter a very simple concept if you have understood anonymous classes this will be more easy for you to understand now let us uh, go and enhance this example let us take multiple parameters let us understand lambda expression with multiple parameters so instead of just a string name i will also have a string say designation let's pass two parameters to our abstract method here so it's very well known you know if you're going to pass two parameters you're just going to include those two parameters here so when i pass these two parameters how i am going to use that in my uh, code is maybe i'll also print the designation so i'll say uh, and designation is let me close the quotes and then let me print the designation here that's it so that's how i'm using the two parameters that is being passed to my method and that is defined here so when i invoke this method display what i should pass i should also pass the designation let's pass the designation to so what should be the output now satish will be mapped to name professor will be mapped to designation and the output will be I am the professor Satish and designation is professor let's go and check whether this code works yeah so that's how you use a lambda expression with multiple parameters so when you are going to go in for a lambda expression when you have to provide the implementation for a method that is present inside a functional interface what is a functional interface an interface that has exactly one abstract method in it got it very simple can this method return anything say for instance uh, this method let's take a very simple method of two integers say let's call this method to be add and int a comma int b Let's assume that this abstract method takes in two integers and returns an integer value so that is the return type so now we are going to take a look at a lambda expression with a return value so let us say lambda expression with a return type how we are going to handle this 
so let's delete everything so when i define this method so it's not void int it's int so when i define this method i have to pass two variables and this method returns the addition of these two variables let's see how to work with this so let me invoke this lambda expression it is nothing but employee e is equal to and what are the two variables i'm going to pass a comma b and this will be passed to my function this function is going to do return a plus b so there's a return statement here and this is going to return a plus b so when i call this method say how will i call this method e dot add and i pass 3 comma 2 what it does is it returns a value right so i have to capture that value int result is equal to e dot add and then i have to print that result because this method returns obviously i have to catch it and i have to print it so what should be the result the result should be 5 let's go and execute this and see yes so that's how lambda expressions can be used with the return statement is it clear i hope you should have a very clear understanding of lambda expressions now if you are still not clear please go back refer to anonymous classes and then come to this session we can also use lambda expressions with threads so let me delete everything let's take a look at the next concept we can also use lambda expressions with threads do you remember this runnable interface that we were using do you remember this and let's take a look at this runnable interface so a thread implements this interface right and what is there inside this runnable interface there is just one single abstract method called void run so this is actually a functional interface say in the implementation itself they are given this is a functional interface so whenever you have a functional interface and you want to provide the definition of this uh, one particular abstract method we can go with obviously a lambda expression so we have a functional interface let's play with it so we are going to just go and implement this for this functional interface let's see how to perform this so our functional interface is runnable say runnable is not here in our previous example we have seen an interface here functional interface here but runnable is predefined in java say for understanding purposes let me just copy this and uh, paste it here just for a reference so you just imagine that our interface functional interface is here just to you know relate it with our previous example but let me comment this because it's already defined in java so we have an interface with just one abstract method how we can define that using a lambda expression we will say runnable uh, we will say r is equal to we'll invoke this we'll give the definition for this run method here i'll just say uh, sys out i am from thread one something like this let me close this method body so again if you want to understand this example you have to go and take a look at our class on threads we have already covered that if you understood that this will be very simple but anyway we know what is a functional interface and we are just giving the definition for this run method using a lambda, lambda expression here and this is the expression and this defines what this run method should perform and how will you use this run method for that you need an object of the thread class right so let's go and create a thread t1 is equal to new thread and we pass this runnable object here and we have to start this run method by just giving r dot uh, it's like i'm sorry and we have to start this uh, run method by just calling t1 dot start so let's go and execute this so i am from thread one so we can also use lambda expressions with threads so do you recollect why we have created a thread object here because only the thread class contains the start method and this start method will internally invoke the 
run method. So that's why we have an object of the threat class here. All these things we have discussed in our sessions on threats, but this is a demo on how we can use Lambda expressions with threats. And I've just shown a demo wherein runnable, which is a functional interface can be defined using a Lambda expression. So with that, we'll wind up our session on uh, Lambda expressions. I hope you're all clear with the concepts on Lambda expressions. Thank you.